Blog Talk Radio. Hello, welcome to my show. My name is Madison Star Moon. Today is January 25th, 2015. Joining me today is Matt Bowman. We're going to have a little discussion about a video that he recently made. Um, before we start, I would like to play that video clip for you. I tend to keep my skepticism off YouTube, but I thought this was worth an upload. Now, for some context, Amanda Williams is a conspiracy theorist. Her primary focus is the idea that all the trails you see behind planes in the sky are part of an evil government plot. Tying in with this is the idea that all mobile phone towers are actually death towers, and they're going to kill you too. She also happens to think that Facebook itself is after her, and that anyone who disagrees with her, including myself, is a paid government agent or a shill. Now, Ryan Stewart is an ordinary, upstanding chap uh, who happens to occasionally disagree with her and derive a bit of amusement from her wild theories. Amanda thought it would be an appropriate response to call his place of work and harass and threaten him, including threatening to tell his dad, which is amazing. Now, she has a bit of a history of doing this, having recently called the workplaces of several meteorologists in order to harass them and discredit them. I hope you enjoy this call, and I hope you join me in despising Madison Star Moon and supporting rational skeptics such as Ryan, who are just trying to educate people on how meteorology actually works. Thank you. Okay, so that's the video. Um, Matt, I'd like to welcome you to the show. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so, you know, this is obviously going to be a confrontation. Um, I would first like to start off by asking you, what compelled you to make a hit piece on me? Uh, I made that singular video on you because I found the way you dealt with Ryan, uh, including you calling him at his place of work, to be um, a bit... Uh, I, well, I think you crossed the line there, Amanda, and I think you probably shouldn't do those things, and I thought it was worth bringing this to people's attention without directing more traffic to your YouTube channel. Making my own video was an eloquent way of doing this. <laughs> okay, so, you know, what I find interesting about the whole thing is how you are somehow trying to make it appear as if Ryan is the victim in all of this. Really, all I was doing was defending myself, and I have been defending myself against you and all of your other friends that create these hate pages against chemtrail activists. What is your particular bone to pick with um, chemtrail activism? Um, well, there's a number of bones to pick with chemtrail activism, but I'd like to at this point state that I have never created such a thing as a hate page. Um, I mean, one of my main problems with chemtrail activism is the utter scientific ignorance that it spreads. It spreads fear. It causes people to become extremely suspicious of things that are actually wonderful atmospheric phenomena. It causes people to plot to blow up airplanes, stalk pilots, stalk people at their places of work, um, organize, you know, organize campaigns to get meteorologists in serious trouble with their employers. I know I've seen a lot of them floating around on some pages that you're very familiar with. Um, and, of course, then you have the people who are, you know, tearing chunks out of their flesh because they think they have more Jelen's disease, which, of course, has been proven to be entirely psychosomatic. Okay. I would like to stop you right there. The first point that you said that was completely false is that you do not participate in hate pages. Every single imposter page... I said I've never page created any that, hate pages, and that uh, is okay, correct. Okay maybe, okay, maybe you said you've never created it, but regardless, you are a willing and active participant in many hate pages, including all of the ones that have the name Madison Drugs Loon, Madison Star Moon, uh, Amanda Williams, all the fake imposter pages. I see your name all over all of them. So can you explain that? Yeah, it's actually pretty funny. Okay, so it's funny. So you just have a uh, you just have an interest in joking around about chemtrail activists or what? I don't find many of them that funny. You are particularly vocal about your activism, and you say a lot of things that are easily provable as false. And you know, you, okay, you, I, I have one thing that you said in your video that is definitely proven false is that you said that cell phone towers, mobile towers, are not considered death towers. Well, I mean, do you think that those cell towers are safe? Yes, I happen to think they are pretty damn safe. Okay, even with all the results and all the scientific evidence that we have proving that they have radiation, they have dangerous frequencies coming off of them, what about the ones that are, like, built well, on sorry, school well, property? Well, well, 
what radiation and what specific frequencies. This is extremely important if you are going to assert that these towers are death towers that have a detrimental effect on human health. Okay, so well, there's, they're called death towers for many reasons. Number one, the people that work on them are often killed. Uh, being a death tower operator is the number one most dangerous job in America here. I don't know about other places. I'm sure if it's here, it's everywhere. It's just a dangerous job. Number two, reason why they're death towers, they catch on fire. They topple over. They mount these things on top of power lines on the most vulnerable. They actually place them in the most vulnerable locations. And, and why are they hiding them? hiding them in church steeples? Do you actually believe that there is no radiation coming off of those antennas? They're live antennas. I don't understand where you're, how you could possibly of defend them. How, I mean, how much microwave frequencies do you think that a human can handle? How much microwave frequencies can a human, uh, can a human handle? Um, My, yes. That's going to be very difficult to quantify. Of course, the dosage is massively different. I imagine working on a tower that is, in fact, on um, is pretty dangerous, but that's really, really nothing to do with what the effect on the people on the ground are, which are easily measurable and shown to be utterly negligible. Which you don't know. Which and you have absolutely no well, idea of. In fact, these, these, radiation is invisible, and also the FCC, um, many towers have been found to have over the levels of radiation that humans can be exposed to. They've found that over and over again. And I interviewed a man who was a death tower worker who actually admitted that they dummy up the documents. So, I mean, if, if you think that radiation is safe and cool and good, I mean, that's all fine and dandy, but don't try to hate on the people that are actually fighting a cause. You're not going to tell me that they're not death towers because they cause death. They cause cancer. They cause, uh, have you ever heard of a, a cancer cluster? I absolutely have. Um, but uh, you can't just label something a death tower because there are deaths associated with it. Uh, I mean, high-tension power lines probably have many, many, many more deaths associated with them. Do you call them death lines as well? What about trains? Yeah, I call, them, I call them death shell? power lines. Yeah, I do, actually. You actually do? I mean, uh, okay. I do. Look, them, look, uh, look on my page. Look in my Madison Star Moon folder. They're right there, death power lines. Okay, I, I wasn't aware you also thought power lines were, were, were death. Power lines I mean, have been proven. It, 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 power lines have been proven. And also you've got the grid, the power grid. It, to, to sit here and try to, to um, defend dangerous technology that we use, whether it be for energy or for communication or whatever, that is irresponsible. I mean, can, I, okay? can I present to you the car? Okay, the car has killed many, 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 many more people than power lines or your death towers ever will. Um, I don't see you kicking up such a huge fuss about these things. Is it because you think that your death towers and your death power lines are part of some sort of actual organized conspiracy and that you don't think the car is part of an organized conspiracy? Or are you just picking and choosing what things you care about? No, I don't pick and choose random things to care about. I care about the things that affect me, okay? I actually live next to two death towers, and across the street from me are seven more, okay? And, I mean, it's not just about that. It's about the entire agenda. And if you're going to ask me, do I believe that all cell towers are actually, like, weapons to be used against us? No, but I do know that the telecommunications industry is a greedy industry, and they do not care about human health. It's been proven over so and over again. Why would you do it? Why would you throw the death tower into good. the stands of a place where kids are going to be playing? I mean, isn't uh, it? I mean, could okay. they just put it out in the field somewhere far away? Why would they have to put it right there? Because that's how you create a good network coverage, Amanda. You know, uh, right on top of the stands at the why school. Why do they put them on <laughs> what are the, I'm talking about at high school. Are kids allowed to you know go around with? Is it so the kids in the school have good Wi-Fi? What is going on here? Well, it is actually quite important that, you know, people in a school or, you know, any academic institution have good Wi-Fi access and good roaming capabilities. Oh you could well argue that. Point. Yeah, so it However, doesn't matter. It's more important for them to have an Internet connection than it is for them to have a, a brain uh, tumor or something from the cancer, right? Okay, Amanda, do you understand? You know, when you see those nice, you know, those sort of um, column-shaped objects on the side of the death towers... Do you understand how much of that radiation is radiating directly downwards? 
Do you have any concept? It's the, that's that that's is, not the point. I'm not going to act like I'm some type of death power worker, professional that knows every ins and outs of exactly what levels of radiation are coming off of each antenna. But I'll tell you this, that the more antennas that come up, the more microwave frequencies we are exposed to, the more susceptible to cancer we are and other things. So You can't get know, cancer from in, the microwave for, frequency, Amanda. It's non-ionizing radiation. This is absolutely basic stuff. I am quite insulted. You think people are so going to get cancer So you're saying that everybody else that's ever written an article about this, all the scientific evidence, every single video, and, and people that actually prove how much radiation they take their instruments and go up to the towers, you're saying they're all full of shit? No, I'm saying it's irrelevant or it's out of context. It's not irrelevant when somebody's bringing a meter up to a fucking tower and taking the readings off of it. Okay, I'm, I'm, okay. You can see a what in smart meters. Give, give what about me a smart reading. meters? Do you have a smart meter on your house, Matt? I actually don't, no. Okay, but I mean, it's the same thing. Why would you, why are you, why are you defending dangerous technology? That makes me think that you're a shill. I mean, I know that you're a troll, is, but a shill is, to me, someone that's paid. To me, your your video, it seemed a little scripted to me. You know what I'm saying? Your answers are a little too metabunky. I mean, I would like to hear from your own mind. And also, I want to say that you are one of the main notorious chemtrolls on the Internet. Everybody knows who you are, Matt. You're not some invisible figure. You're very well known to all of us. You know, so I just don't understand what you can gain from attacking us and participating on the hate pages. Um, okay, um, first of all, you know, my, my words are entirely my own here, Amanda. Uh, maybe I speak in a manner that you, you seem to think means that I'm metabunky, whatever you mean by that. Um, but, you know, as I say, these are my own words. Um, you're accusing me and, you know, you're insinuating that I'm a shill, that I'm paid. Um, I find that absolutely incredible. Um, my history is well known to anyone. You are more than welcome to look at my academic record any part of my life. I'm actually very open with who I am online. I don't hide behind a fake name or anything. Um, you know, I am not a shill. Um, I really don't get where you're coming from when you say that things like smart meters are dangerous technologies. I mean, I am sitting within because it's inches been proven. of it. It's been proven over and over again. Smart meters are dangerous. So are baby monitors. So are a whole bunch of other things. So don't okay, act so like Amanda, we don't know what I, we're I, talking I, about. I see you out there, and, and I understand at the moment you're probably using a number of wireless devices, correct? Right. And I actually have uh, uh, side effects from you're that. You're transmitting through the air in the room you are in many, many wireless signals, and you are receiving them as well. And I know you make frequent use of a mobile phone because that's what you use to take all the pictures of the mobile phone towers. So right. Is, is that radiation okay? I'm trying to just get another. No radiation is okay. I'm sacrificing no myself. Okay. I'm endangering my own life. Every time I go out and do these things, I have a side effect of radiation that when I got it checked out, they said it looked like I had had chemotherapy. And it was from the hundreds of towers that I visited over the past few years. It's a side effect. I have a constant ringing in, uh, in my ears that never, ever goes away. It's a high pitched ringing, and I know many other people suffer from that. I do want to discuss the chemtrails with you for a minute. I would like to ask you, what makes you believe that the weather that we see or the, you know, lines in the sky are totally natural? Well, uh, you're sort of uh, getting a little wrong there. The lines we see in the sky are, of course, not natural. Those are lines left by planes. That's, that's not up for debate. I don't think you're going to meet anyone that says, you know, uh, Cirrus aviaticus is natural. It's absolutely not. It's an unnatural cloud formation, but it is just a normal byproduct of burning hydrocarbons at altitude. There is really nothing suspicious about them. Sometimes they dissipate quickly. Sometimes they don't dissipate at all. It, it's you know, it, it is exactly the same There's physics. There's nothing that you should suspicious apply to about the about the sky looking like a heinous, hot mess every single day. Uh, okay, that first, not it's not every single day. I see, that's not what makes me day. think that you are a shill, because no rational, you sound very intelligent, you're a very well-spoken young man, I'll give you that. Why would you, how are you, guys, I've got to take a second here, All right. I'm getting a little overwhelmed. I don't understand how you can possibly try to say that you actually believe that those are contrails, that nothing is being sprayed. 
because there is literally no evidence to suggest that they are anything but contrails. Every single picture I've seen of, of, of so-called chemtrails, and I have seen thousands, and I have seen maybe hundreds of YouTube videos, it is all completely explainable using what we have known for many, many years about contrail formation. You know, people say... You're oh, saying you saw chemtrails when you were a kid? Actually, no. Well, I didn't see chemtrails because they're not a real thing. But I have seen many contrails when I was a kid. I saw them persisting. I mean, contrails um, I like what fact, you see today? Absolutely. I was, in fact, Well, that's because you're so someone. young. That's probably because you're so young. Those of us that are 30 and up, we've never seen anything like this. Uh, Chemos, I mean, Amanda, chem skies. I'm 28 years old, um, and, you know, my father worked for the Civil Aviation Authority for a number of years, and his father before ah, him... Ah, uh, there for... we go. No, 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 no. Uh-huh. Me, me up. And his <laughs> father before him worked for the Royal Air Force, creating lead indicators to help people oh, on the wow, ground okay. shoot down, you know, to shoot down fighter planes. And, in fact, being able to trace a contrail back in World War II was an extremely helpful thing to be able to do, they spend a lot of money and time trying to negate contrail persistence because it does tend to mean you get shot down by the Luftwaffe. Now, what I'm trying to get to you here is that both of, both generations above me, and in fact, you know, uh, on all sides of my family and many other people I've spoken to about this of all ages, do remember contrails persisting. We have photographs of contrails persisting all the way through history. Now, granted, there may not be as many, but as I'm sure you are aware, there has been a massive increase in air travel. We are talking thousands of percent. Uh, and there has also been a change to the type of engines that are used, a change in the cruising altitude, and a change to the type of aviation fuel used in these planes. All so you mean things. to tell me that we just changed everything to be the absolute worst it could possibly be? As, as developing technology you know, exists, we're going to continue to make contrails persist even more? That's ridiculous that wasn't no. really the issue the issue especially with the you know the introduction of the high bypass turbofan engine which i know for example geoengineering watch claims cannot create contrails but that's just a matter of his own scientific illiteracy what about um, jpa what about jpa dirty fuel engine, additives what about those? much higher output per amount of fuel put into it than its predecessor so it was actually a very good thing because it reduced the amount of actual pollution now that is a good thing Air travel, you can debate whether or not that's a good thing. It you sound a like you're reading from a script. Stop I am reading, reading from a from script. script. I absolutely yes, you are. You're being fake I'm... as hell right now. I don't want to hear your fake disinformation facts. You I want to talk... me of reading from a script. I want to talk Sorry, like Amanda. a person you... to a person. Amanda, you're now, actually you're, accusing no, me you're not going to Amanda me Would because you like when me you're, just... gonna, you're basically telling me that me and everyone else that's talking about this, we're just imagining this. We're not really watching them make, make crisscross shapes and designs in the sky. They're making obvious patterns, grids. Come on now. And what is a chem sky? I never saw a chem sky before. What is a chem sky? I don't know. It's probably something you've made up. A chem but sky is from the, the frequency you mentioned pumping the grid. through the chem, artificial chem clouds. We're overcast all the time. You know, I'm very concerned about what your position is. After listening to you, you know, it seems to me that you are just totally promoting you know, the idea that these are contrails. Uh, what about geoengineering? Let's hit that up, no, 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 that up for that a minute before I have a stroke. Finished. Go ahead, Matt. Say whatever you're going to say, and then we'll go to geoengineering. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, so you mentioned grids, right? And you, you seem to have some issue with grids, and it's something we've heard mentioned a lot. Now, there's an interesting test you can do right now that will sort of help you understand how a grid might, you know, form in the sky. Would you like me to just quickly run you through it? It would take about two minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, no. I really don't. I mean, that's that, you're, you're basically saying that when I watch the planes spray intentionally, all of them. I mean, we, we all make our videos. We all know what's going on. So trying to promote the contrail idea is like a dead issue. I'm more concerned okay, so, with so basically why you, you don't would believe that. Anything that I have to say, you are, you're assuming that anything that no, attempts to ahead, debunk I, go your ahead, chosen go ahead, theory... I'm not giving you two minutes. No, I'm not giving you two minutes to spread disinformation on my radio show. But I'll give you a minute to go ahead and explain whatever you're saying. Okay, well, it's a very simple thing. Get a piece of paper and draw a cross on it. Those two crosses are two intersecting flight paths. Now, move the paper diagonally. The paper moving diagonally is the wind. Now, draw another cross in the same place, assuming the flight paths haven't moved. Repeat this three or four times, and you are left with a grid. 
This is how condensation okay, why doesn't it dissipate? In the sky. It needs to dissipate. I mean, any condensation, it doesn't matter or whatever, it, it would dissipate. eventually why dissipate. This never dissipates. Why it turns into clouds. I don't understand. The clouds have to dissipate because I live in England. And I can have the same damn cloud looming over my house for nearly a week, it seems. And I'm, I'm exaggerating slightly there. Why didn't planes but make clouds before? They absolutely did make clouds before, Amanda. It was just no, a lot less No, the creaking com- didn't. And that's another thing. No, they didn't. And pulling up those pictures from World War II is the oldest metabolic trick. You got, you guys got to come up with something better. I want to go on to geoengineering. Do you believe it's happening so right minute. now? But you're just dismissing the evidence because you don't like it and you think it's I'm a not trick. dismissing evidence. I'm telling you that we have, we have proof. You have to say that that evidence is false. You have to show why that evidence is okay, false. Okay, do I believe that contrails exist? Sure. Sure, I do. I believe contrails like, exist. I believe there's dirty JP8 fuel additives, trade secret ingredients. But do I believe that that has anything to do with chemtrails? No, I don't. They're, you're talking about two different things. You're trying to do the throw-off game. Like, don't think about chemtrails. Just constantly, you know, try to prove that contrails exist. We all know contrails exist, but chemtrails are not contrails. Got it? Well, the reason contrails are important, Amanda, is because... Everything that is claimed to be a chemtrail is, in fact, a contrail. So understanding more about how contrails behave, how they can spread out, how they can persist, and how they can form, and how they can create patterns is absolutely central to this debate. And to say that talking about contrails is irrelevant is being amazingly intellectually dishonest. No, I actually just admitted to you that I believe contrails exist. They've existed since the you know, invention of the aircraft. That's not what the argument is. You are denying that chemtrails exist. So who's really being the dumbass here? You are being, uh, you're saying that, uh, I don't forget what word you use, but it's irresponsible of you to uh, totally quote, say, okay, well, anything sprayed in the sky is a contrail. We know that they spray chaff. We know that they do cloud seeding. They do pesticides, herbicides, fungicides. What else do they do? Uh, they do, they test for the trade winds using lithium. Um, I mean, they do all kinds of experiments on the atmosphere, which I would like to move on to. And we'll go back to, I'll give you in the end of the, I don't know how many minutes we have, but I'll give you a time to give your whole speech, okay? So don't worry about it. I'm going to try to be as fair as I can. (laughs) Go ahead. Let's Um, let's talk about geoengineering. Yeah, geoengineering. Do you believe it's happening right now? I believe that it occurs in some small isolated places because, yes, it is being de- it is being tested and it has been proposed. I do not believe, however, that geoengineering has anything to do with the trails we see behind planes. There are no geoengineering proposals or anything that I've seen being tested or even heard about on, you know, weird conspiracy theory forums that suggests that the trails we see behind planes all over the world every day and have observed for nearly a century are anything to do with a geoengineering project of any kind. What about the Air Force document that shows that their chemtrails are an exotic weapon? What are those chemtrails? Uh, I'm assuming you're referring to HR2... No, no, no. no. I'm talking about chemtrails, the exotic weapon. Yeah, you're right. Um, Where it specifically outlines chemtrails as an exotic weapon. What is that exotic weapon, chemtrails? Um, That's a bit more difficult. Um, I'm not hugely familiar on that document because it's only something I've read in passing. However, it also talks about space-based plasma weaponry, among other things. Um, And from what I remember reading about this document, and you'll have to excuse me because I'm not hugely familiar with it, um, the fact that this document exists is not actually evidence for anything. I think you need to look into really who wrote this document and who submitted this document because it's not actually saying that they exist. Um, it, 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 in fact, I definitely know it doesn't say that they exist, although it's anything that they are actually doing. What it, about Agent Orange think, in Vietnam? How, how did they spray well, Agent, Agent Orange, Orange in, in Vietnam? Vietnam is a powerful defoliant that was dropped on, you know, the Viet Cong in order to reduce the amount of cover. Right, but how did they, they do have. that? Did they do that from planes? Well, yes, they did pretty much. Yes, I think you could also fire it uh, out so of a the military. So, so you're saying that you have proven documentation showing that a military aircraft has converted the NCO, has converted the aircraft to spray a poison out as a weapon, right? Well, yes, but um, it, it's not an airliner. Do you know what how the Agent Orange planes flew at? This is not, you know, cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. 
They're not aerosolizing something out of a 747. You know, this was, you know, this was localized military defoliation. It is nothing to do with the trails we see behind planes today at all. The fact that you right, can right, yes, it has everything to do with it. It's just showing that they convert aircraft. I'm going to tell you, I have a friend. You I have a friend. Here, I have a friend that's in special ops, and I asked him about, you know, the chemtrail planes. And he specifically told me <clears throat> that he buys aircraft, commercial aircraft, he converts them, and then sells them to the military as weapons. So if you want to say that he's lying, well, that's okay. Well, then he's lying. What about the Air Force mechanic, the retired Air Force mechanic that I spoke to in oh, graphic Megan, detail, the bringing him the pictures of the ballast tank, no and he said, that, how did I get that? How did I get that photo? I mean... We know that the military uses aircraft as weapons. Well, of course the military uses the aircraft as weapons. Holy shit. I mean, we are, we are talking about the difference between the fact that you can theoretically fit a nozzle to a plane, okay, and that somehow being proof of a global spraying program that every single government in the world is in on, every single aircraft manufacturer in haven't the world. Haven't the UN is in admitted to this? I mean, I'm sure the UN. No, of course, I can pull some documents. Not to the the UN has admitted to spraying us. You know, all the UN countries. No, no, they haven't admitted that. That's that's pure conjecture. There's no way. I'm very the UN curious. I'm curious about you. I have a question. Sorry. Why would you protect and defend a government that has already disarmed you? Uh, I'm sorry. That was a bit left field. You, um, okay, okay. Yeah, it's uh, not out of left field. You, you, you got, England got their rights, their gun rights taken from them. Don't you find that a bit unconstitutional? England doesn't have a constitution, Amanda. Uh, and also, this is I'm completely saying, irrelevant. I'm saying, I'm speaking metaphorically. I'm saying, don't you think that your government, don't you think you should question your government when they take away your gun rights? Well, no, actually, I don't. I'm not an advocate for gun rights. I am very much pro-gun control. However, this is completely irrelevant to the discussion, Amanda. Can we please get back to the science okay, of the, 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 I'm just trying to give the audience a basic impression of who I'm dealing with here. We're talking with yes, someone no, no, who, after their government me, took away their guns, they were still okay and are still defending the fact that we're not getting sprayed with anything. I know England gets hit hard. I don't know how you could possibly be okay with defending something that hurts you. It doesn't hurt me at all, Amanda, because I don't allow myself to become paranoid about it. It absolutely hurts you. I'm saying this quite honestly. I believe that the chemtrail hoax hurts you. It damages you. It makes you afraid. It takes up all of your time. And to 99.9% .9 of the population, it makes you look quite silly. Now, I am I quite don't well give a in crap. Here. Do you think I? Do you think I'm trying to be an activist to be liked? Obviously not. I'm just not um, going to stay asleep and deny what I'm seeing with my own eyes. And let me ask you this: I know you've heard some of my calls to the government. Why do you think the uh, EPA, after years and years and years of me calling them, has still uh, yet to even investigate any of my claims? I, I, I and I'm going to be really honest with you, Amanda here. I think it's because when you call, they think, oh, God, it's her again. And then they hear you out. They humor you because they have to be polite. That is what they are paid to do. And then they quietly no, call that in a cabinet. they're paid to protect the environment. Idiot. They're not paid to be polite. They're, pr they're paid to investigate environmental crimes. Go ahead. Yes, but this isn't an environmental crime, Amanda. This is something you have made up. You, you I have made it up. Wait, I thought we just established that the Air no, Force okay, made it up. They're chemtrails. They call them chemtrails. Isn't it the Air Force that made it up? Oh, I'm sorry. I no, guess I did. No, it isn't. Go You're just making it up now again. The Air Force didn't make up the term chemtrails. Yeah, they just, you know, outlined it for the people. They just outlined it for the people that they're training. You're right. It was just a training manual. Training for what? It's, but, well, did, you you know. read, did you read the Air Force manual that was entitled <sighs> Chemtrails? Did you read it, Amanda? I read uh, it. I read it page for page. Do you know what it is, Amanda? Be honest. I thought you just said you weren't that familiar with it earlier. Now you've read it page for page? Different documents, Amanda. Oh, okay. You're talking about HR 22 or whatever the other one was? No, that was okay, the look, we were talking about we earlier. Have, we, have, we, have limited, we have limited time left, and I could sit here and debate with you forever and ever and ever, and it could just go on, but I, I want to really, for the, everybody that's listening, I want you to tell them why you are going to continue 
to stalk, antagonize, harass, and participate on hate pages against activists and environmental activists. Absolutely. Okay, I would like to first refute the fact that Amanda says that I'm stalking, you know, I'm not phoning people up where they work, for example. That's something very much in the ballpark of, you know, your chemtrail hoax believer. I continue to debunk, which is not harassment, I continue to debunk chemtrail believers because I think they cause genuine harm for all the reasons I stated earlier and more. Wait, you know, debunking is not, is not going on a fake of page of, of where somebody has taken my photograph? or somebody is taking, you know, and writing all these stuff. And you guys posted my address, and I turned all of that into the FBI, and I did see you as a part of that. So you're going to try to deny it or whatever, but you and all, I've been watching all of you. You know, you guys think you're watching me, but I'm watching you as well. You know, that's criminal activity. It's criminal mischief online, and you think because you're hiding behind your profile and your computer screen that you're somehow, you know, and you're in a different country that it doesn't affect you, but it's it's really crimes. It's crimes, and they haven't been outlined so, yet. So you're saying you know, I have um, committed a crime, Amanda. Can you please be quite certain when you say, are you saying I have committed a crime? This is important. I'm saying that I believe that stalking, harassing, um, are you and saying participating on hate, and, and you participating on hate pages you? is a crime, but it's not a crime that has been really outlined by the... Um, the authorities yet. I've spoken with them in, in great detail about my pages. I, I was actually involved with the FBI when you guys were getting real crazy and constantly sending them stuff when it was a back and forth. And these laws have not been written yet because this is all fairly new. But, you know, the troll day is going to come. Actually, these totally exist. They totally exist, Amanda. Um, I would imagine the reason you've not got a response from the FBI is because they, uh, A, don't care, or B, think you're, you know, not important enough the to FBI deal with, which is sort of the, you know, continuation yeah, of A. Right. Or C, they don't actually think that any of the stuff that you've reported constitutes actual stalking or actual harassment. Um, yeah, actually, they, actually they did. When you, you guys, when you guys that made um, a fake profile of me and you wrote, I'm, to I'm going to shoot here. down all the planes and posted that, that is a crime. When you're saying, I'm going to shoot down all the planes and you made a fake account acting like I was the one saying that, I sent all of that to the FBI. I sure did. And I'm sure they I have the ability, that account, the capability Why are you to find the IP account? address for those people. Yeah, you've been involved in all of it the entire way for I don't know how long I've been dealing with you, but I know it's been a long time. And considering we don't know each other, I find that to be stalking. Someone that has such an interest in me and always, you know, coming after me and stuff. What do you call that? Um, I don't know what to call that, Amanda. You've kind of just gone freewheeling here. Um, in all honesty, Amanda, you know, I really am not that interested in you at all in, in any respect. Uh, I think yeah, you're you really not that name. interested in me, but you just made a video about me a couple of weeks ago? Okay. Yeah, because it was actually more about, you know, the way you and other conspiracy theorists treat people who question you. Um, oh, you know, you're worried you about how we treat of, people I, yeah, when you, you guys the are the ones that create the hate pages? Worked. You went to the point of finding out where this man worked, finding his phone number calling his phone number, then recording him without his permission or knowledge, okay? Now, if I go to a court of law with that, compared to going to a court of law with, say, these people said something nasty about me on a Facebook page, and I think they're all part of a giant conspiracy, and I've called them shills, I mean, how do you think that's going to play out? Is it to go, in fact, I welcome that. I welcome any authority figure that's listening to this right now to go ahead and investigate me and investigate the people that I'm exposing online, and you look at what they're doing on their Facebook pages. You guys are stalker shills. You harass the hell out of us. You try to discredit the chemtrail movement and, I guess, the death tower movement, too. I mean, are you a Sandy Hook believer as well? Might as well just go ahead and put in false flags in there as well, right? Uh, well, I know you, you, for example, do shit on the memories of dead children by insinuating that they didn't die. That's kind of by the by. Um, I think what it's important to remember, Amanda, that this, uh, the debunking and discrediting the chemtrail movement, as you put it, or the death tower movement, is not a felony. It's not even a misdemeanor. It is actually, as far as I'm concerned, doing right by the world because it keeps, you know, this sort of lunacy in check. Yeah. Well, anything else you wanted to say? No, not really. I think this has been pretty productive. Thanks for having me on. I'll yep. love to do it again. Yep. All right. Thanks so much, Matt. Goodbye. Have a great week.